Okay guys, so today, in today's video, we're going to be looking at a program called VDesktop for the Raspberry Pi 4. And this works on Raspberry Pi OS only, I think. It might work on Ubuntu, but I could be wrong. So this awesome project is created by BotSpot, the same developer who created Pi Apps, which is the one of the best app stores for the Raspberry Pi in my opinion. So what VDesktop is, it's basically like a VM for your Raspberry Pi. You can run different operating systems inside of the same operating system. So it's kind of a really cool concept and it honestly works super well. Like in that VM, there's not that much lag and you can do a lot of stuff in it. And after you boot up an image, it saves all that changes you made to that image, it saves it. So you could even edit a image file and then flash the same image file to a SD card and when you boot it up, all those changes you created earlier would still be there. So in this video, we're going to be installing it and then taking a look at some of it. So if you look at this GitHub page, there's a lot of information here. I would recommend you guys going through this thing and reading it through. But first of all, you have to download it. So we're just going to git clone the project, copy this, open up a terminal, and let's just move it over here to the middle, and let's paste it in here. Hit enter it's cloning into V desktop and then we should be ready to go so I want to talk about the usage first so you can boot into an image file so this is the way to boot into an image you can boot into a USB drive so if you already have a USB drive flashed you can just plug it into your Pi running Raspberry Pi OS and boot it up so it's a really cool concept you can boot into a whole directory and you can specify if you want to go to the graphical user interface or just the CLI, the terminal, basically. And if you don't change anything, graphical user interface is assumed. And then there's a lot more information over here that you can read through if you're interested. But to start out, it says, after running once, vDesktop will create a file in user bin. So now you can simply run vDesktop. So that's a pretty cool addition, but you have to run it first. So I'm just going to copy this right here. And then I'll show you what to do next. So you need the operating system to be able to boot up into. And I'm going to be using Raspberry Pi OS at the beginning. If you're going to download, you see right here I have Raspberry Pi OS, Twister OS, and Kali OS. So Raspberry Pi OS and Twister OS both work flawlessly. Kali Linux only works if you have your kernel set to 64-bit, which I'll show you what that means. But... Yeah, so right now, these are the three operating systems that do work. Sadly, Ubuntu-based distros do not work on here yet. But in the future, I'm hoping that, that it will be added because that would be a really cool addition to have. And when you download Twister OS, it's going to be twisteros.image.exe. Well, you have to extract it because you can't boot if it's still in the XE format. It has to be just image. But for the beginning, let's start out with the Raspberry Pi OS. So back in your terminal... You just paste this in here, sudo vdesktop vdesktop, and you're going to type home, pi, and then wherever your file is. Mine's in downloads, so downloads dash whatever your name is called. Mine's called rpios.image. Then you're going to hit, hit enter, and it should theor theoretically boot from it. I'm going to hit enter, and let's see if it works. So you see it's mounting them on the side right here, and it says booting in 5 seconds. So let's see if this works. You see, it's doing all the normal boot stuff that it would do in a Raspberry Pi OS. And I'm actually just going to leave this on for real time so you can see how long this takes for everything to actually load and work so you don't get worried if you're waiting too long or whatever. But honestly, you see that? It boots up pretty fast. I'm not going to lie. Pretty fast. This bar at the top may take a minute to boot up because it's just loading and you do have to understand this is in a VM basically so you're, you can't expect exactly the same performance as natively running on your Pi but you can expect a little bit under that is acceptable in my opinion so I mean we already we're in the desktop basically and now we're just waiting for this bar to load up which might take a minute but you can see you can just minimize this Minimize this too. And here we have our normal Raspberry Pi OS. We, I click on V Desktop 
and we're back here on this one so you see it actually is loading up it's just a little bit slow right now and I do want to mention I'm running this from an SD card that is a bit old because I'm ha I'm having a problem with some drives but if you were booting this off a USB drive SSD drive I could guarantee that it will work super well super good performance so those things I don't know exactly why they're not loading up because before they were but I mean you see Raspberry Pi OS does boot up and you could make changes to this you could change the wallpaper install nail fetch install software theme it up and then close it up and then you could flash that image to an SD card and all those changes you made earlier would still be there so it would, you wouldn't have to change anything after flashing so it's a really cool concept so we close that up and you're gonna close this terminal up too to make sure that everything is done and next we had Twister OS right here so I'm interested to see Twister OS inside of Raspberry Pi OS and once you run that script once it makes a file in your system called vdesktop so if I were to write vdesktop you don't have to, it's inside of your system now so you don't have to type anything else so you can just type vdesktop home pi downloads dash twister os dot image I can hit enter and it should boot up for me with no problem here I am I let twister os boot up and it booted up with no problem and I mean it's super cool and this time everything loaded up it's super snappy honestly you see this I'm just scrolling through these things like super fast no like freezing or lagging is really happening here if I wish to open up an app let's see if it does open up some of these things just like aren't opening up but when I was testing it before they were so again I think it's my SD card because of those slow write and write speeds but overall you see it does boot up and it works really well and you can go back here do your work use your normal Chromium web browser on your Raspberry Pi OS and you can go back compile something edit something on twister os run some game or even do something like that and you actually should see good enough performance to be able to do that and you can save that image and you'll always be able to flash it with your edited raspberry pi os or twister os image on any operating system yeah so that's about it for twister os we just close that right there you see and we close this and when you try to boot up something else, it's actually going to eject these two drives right here and it will try to boot up something else. So next, you see I had downloaded Kali Linux, but look what happens when I try to boot up Kali. I'm going to show you guys. So I'm going to change Twister OS right here to Kali.image. Hit enter. You see right here it says, you cannot boot a 64-bit OS without enabling the 64-bit kernel. So it's actually really easy to do. You just copy this arm equals 64-bit in the config.txt and you reboot and then you'll be able to boot up operating systems like Kali Linux. So I'm not going to do that right now because I don't really need to. But if you do want to boot up a 64-bit OS like Kali Linux, feel free to add that to your config.txt or you can use a tool like Commander Pi, which has a button to do it. You just download Commander Fry Pi over from Pi Apps, and then you can just hit that one button, and it will make your kernel 64-bit. So that's another way to do it. And next, I want to try to boot off a USB stick because it said you could do that. So I have my main Raspberry Pi OS drive right here. I'm going to plug it into my Pi, and then I'll show you guys how we could boot it up. So I plugged it in there. And it should pop up in a second. Okay, it's right here. I'm going to hit cancel. And we need to find the drive name. So you can easily do that using gparted, which you can install with sudo apt install gparted. Type in your system password. It's raspberry if you haven't changed it. And wait for it to load up. And right here, this is my drive I'm running right now. If I click right here, and you see it's called dash dev dash sdb2 so to boot from that drive we're going to open back a terminal we're going to type 
v desktop dash dev dash sdb2 and you hit enter and it's going to try to boot from that right now you see it's mounting it and it's going to boot from my usb drive with no problem at all okay so right here i booted up my main drive off of my usb stick which you could also plug an sd card into your slot right there and boot it up and that would be totally functional too but you see there's kind of that same problem with raspberry pi os where the icon's not showing up but I think if probably if I did a reboot, it probably would work most likely. But all my apps, everything that I use every day, they're right here. I could even edit it, change the wallpaper, and next time I boot up, it should be the same way. Like, I could just change it to that, to the cyberpunk style, and it would be there this next time I go. You can minimize it, everything is working, and it's all off my USB stick that's plugged into my Pi. So the concept is really cool, plus the performance is way better than any other virtual machine you would get on your Pi, like Kimu or anything like that, which it just works so much better, and it's an awesome program. So yeah, I'll just close that out right now, and I can close this out, and when I unplug my drive, those things should go away. But yeah, so vDesktop is really a great program. I've had a lot of fun using it and playing around with the operating systems on it, which I would hope to see one day maybe a little bit of Ubuntu support, running some Ubuntu Mate in the vDesktop would be pretty cool, or some other operating systems which would be supported would be really nice to see on here. But even now, being able to run from your USB stick, from your SD cards, from images, it's just really cool. And I really like it. Great job, BotSpot. I definitely recommend you guys to check this out. You might enjoy playing around with it, customizing your operating systems, compiling, stuff like that on here. So it's a really cool concept, and I really enjoyed using it. So please hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe.